Do you um, know if you visit yeah. Oz? Is Drea? that yeah? No, not, no, not where the wizard lives. Where the wizard oh, lives. Oh right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> if you visited Oz, where the wizard lives, and you went to the Emerald City, mm. um, you would have to wear glasses. Everyone wore glasses in the city because Didn't it wasn't they? emerald. So they had emerald tinting glasses. Oh. The walls were a bit emeraldy, but the rest of it wasn't. And so in the- The walls were a bit emerald. Well, some of the walls were emerald, but then they didn't have enough, I guess, for the floors and the ceilings and the light fittings and the- like, They ran out of emerald. It's very expensive of, exactly. to build an entire city of emeralds. Yeah, so what they did instead was go, let's give everyone glasses that are tinted. This is in the original book. And mm. um, so you had to wear these glasses wow. everywhere around. So everyone was wearing glasses in the emerald city. Yeah, yeah just a good. normal city. Just a normal city. <laughs> Dorothy went into the normal city. Yeah. Um, I really like, you know, there's a guy who's the sort of considered the founder of ophthalmology. He's called Francis Donders or Franz Cornelius Donders. And he kind of um, had lo lots of breakthroughs in ophthalmology. And he also named a part of your body. Now, whereabouts do you think that part of your body would probably be? Um, your eye. Cor the cornea, Cornelius. Oh, I love oh, that. Yes. Oh, I think that comes from a completely different route. Cool, yeah. No, <laughs> he actually, he named the space between the back of your tongue and the hard palate the roof of your mouth oh that's called the space of donders just the empty space the empty space yeah you cool. know when you, you need can't to refer name, to that you can't discover an empty part of your body <laughs> I'm, just gonna, yeah. I'm gonna name the bit under the armpit when you've lifted up your arm a bit that's gonna be the zone of murray from now on <laughs> yeah very proud <laughs> one thing that happened and this just when you had a pants nay uh they were made of cellulose nitrate so this is before people thought of putting uh, sides on glasses Ooh. so it's just pinching your nose but they're made of cellulose nitrate so often they could set on fire what? Well, oh, if they reacted with like, your... Yeah, it does kind of explode or something. Yeah, it's quite an unstable substance. So mm. it, you could either get a sort of acid burn on your nose where it was clinging onto mm. you, oh or goodness. if it reacted with your skin or your sweat, it could go on fire. Wow, wow, really? Yeah. So you didn't need to light it. It could just react with... Yeah. Mm. So it's quite a risky sport at the time, being short-sighted. Yeah. Wow. That's it is, amazing. It is just unfathomable. I mean, I know we've been here already, but actually your ears were sitting there for centuries, <laughs> looking at these ridiculous it's not, it's not obvious. Nose, it's thinking, not... come on, I use it. <laughs> I'm here. What do you think I'm here? Have I'm you, here. Have I'm here. Have you seen the hat yeah? brim okay. monocle? What? Have no. you seen the hat brim monocle? No, no. So it's it, you're wearing a hat. You've got a uh, you've got a lovely brim on your hat. Why not just attach a monocle to that? So when you need to see something, you just go boop. Oh, <laughs> very nice. You, just got off. you could have two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I was looking into a couple of glasses inventions, oh, modern yeah. day glasses inventions. Um, and because I, I used to own a pair of unbreakable glasses. <laughs> when oh, I bought, no, oh what, no. Yeah, what <laughs> happened to them? <laughs> well, they weren't unlosable and I did lose them. So I don't have them anymore. But yeah, the guy who sold them to me scrunched them up in front of me, threw them, stamped on them and then put, picked them up and they looked no. wow. And you said, oh, yeah. um, I'll take that pair over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, I read uh, recently, so 3D glasses is obviously, um, it's very hard for me to use 3D glasses because I have to wear them on top of my mm. actual glasses okay. in the cinema. Um, but someone has now invented for people who hate it altogether, 2D glasses that you wear to a 3D movie <laughs> that translate the movie back into 2D. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's clever. So that's if you just really hate good. 3D, that's what you well, wear. Well, also, if you can only see properly with one eye, it's really hard to see 3D. So those are a very useful invention. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I actually just like watching 3D movies without the 3D glasses, just slightly blurred. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> have reversed. you ever have you ever tried to do this? You turn the 3D glasses upside down and all the 3D effects go really weird. Really? Never done that? No. no. Yeah. do that if the movie's really boring. Yeah. <laughs> it shows how good 3D films are that we've all experimented with various <laughs> other ways of watching them. Do you, do you know who else uses 3D glasses outside of a cinema? Uh, oh, no. Heart surgeons. They now perform heart surgery wearing 3D glasses and, and literally the cinema glasses that you get. So they can go see a movie and then go straight into heart surgery. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, and Why? Because when they have the, um, the screen, because they have to see what's going on inside, so they're looking into a monitor, they've realized that if you can make that 3D, oh, if you yeah. can see what's going on in 3D, it saves hours on the operation. So are they looking into a monitor because that's magnifying the tiny, minute yeah, stuff they're doing? So Why would I would look you directly go, at the heart if no, I were No, because you go keyhole, don't uh, you? Yeah. Oh yeah, good point, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, okay. So John Dolland from Dolland and Aitchison, uh, he invented glasses for horses. Speaking of inventions, <laughs> cool. they're good, right? So they made it look like the road was bending upwards. The horse thought the road was bending upwards. Okay. So it meant it had to lift its feet higher. Oh. And in the olden days, and still now actually, people liked the look of horses that lifted their feet higher. Yeah. So it's a bit like equestrianism, right? Yeah. And so gentlemen in the day would have um, horses pulling their carriages that were doing these kind of high walks yeah and it was just so because they had these glasses but, but wait do, do horses 
did they always think they were going uphill? They always think they're going endlessly uphill. I think they must do, but then they wouldn't be that tired because they're not going uphill. That must no. be. Yeah. But it's kind of like that. an Escher diagram for them, right? How are they always <laughs> going uphill, but somehow they get back to the start without going down? Also, I mean, they must be bewildered. People think, oh, your horse looks great, but also your horse is wearing a massive pair of glasses. So <laughs> it kind of counteracts the cool, fashionable effect of this lovely prancing walk. It depends walk. how fashionable the glasses are. That's right? true. Yeah. You have contact lenses for chickens, don't you? Do you? Yeah, like, yeah they, were, they started in the, in the 80s, I think. And it's red tinted contact lenses, I believe, because chickens sometimes when they're together start cannibalizing each other. And if you tint them red, then everything looks red. So they can't see maybe a little blister on another chicken that they want to eat. Oh, so wow. they stop trying to eat each other. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> um, we're going to have to wrap up in a second. Anything before we do? Uh, I've got another thing on inventions uh, mm -hmm. about an inventor called Dr. Nakamatsu. He claims to have invented more things than anyone else in history. He claims to have invented the uh, floppy disk. Yes. He claims that his inventions come by going to the bottom of a swimming pool and holding his breath <laughs> until he almost dies. And that's where his best ideas come from. Yeah, he even invented waterproof post-it notes, didn't he? Or a notepad yes. so that he could write those <laughs> ideas down as he was on the brink of death. Uh, surely all of his inventions are anti-drowning devices. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Well, these ones that he's got, he's invented these new glasses and it's one pair, but it has four different settings. And so it has night walking glasses which kind of fire light around so when you're in the nighttime it gives you your own light to see where you're walking cool. um hiding eye wrinkles glasses so they have a little bit at the bottom that hides your <laughs> wrinkles nice. in your eyes um conference glasses um for people who are tired and want to sleep in a meeting so it's like homer simpson does yeah. puts the eyes on and silent communication glasses for person who is too shy to speak words but would not mind having the glasses display printed words and thoughts so you're too shy to talk to someone, but then the message comes across <laughs> the screen on the eye glasses. That's what, good so idea, isn't it? So he's found a way of transmitting your thoughts onto your glasses. I have a feeling you, more credit. you probably need a <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's it. That is all of our facts. Thank you everyone for listening in the audience. And we hope you have an amazing rest of the day. This is such an extraordinary charity and it really is a big deal. 2.5 billion people do not have access to good eyesight and the means to have it in the world today. We need to change that. So you're all doing an amazing thing and have a great rest of your day. We hopefully will see you again soon. Goodbye.